Hello, aquatic community. I want to compare the contrast in pharyngeal jaw research and DNA research. Which is better to identify cichlids, pharyngeal jaw or DNA? So let's get into the aquatic science. First, let's go over how effective the pharyngeal jaw research is in identifying differences between cichlid fish and then check out how effective and accurate DNA research is in comparison. That way we can compare which method works better for us. Here's another example of why it's compelling to compare both methods in identifying cichlid species. On this chart here, you can see the pharyngeal jaw studies can tell you whether or not a fish is an open water swimmer, what type of food they eat, whether it's insect larvae or vegetation, and things of that nature. Also, check out this clip of me going over the salmon fish second set of jaws. And then the second clip of Rita Mata eel research as it pertains to pharyngeal jaw. Check it out. Now this pharyngeal jaw is unique amongst cichlids, eels, and some other fish. Not all fish have it. Let's see if we can get another illustration. Check this out. This is one of those fish with the second pair of jaw. Salmon. A UC Davis researcher has found they have a second set of jaws in their throat that can reach forward into the mouth, seize prey, and drag it back for swallowing. This is really an amazing innovation in feeding behavior for fishes in general. Researcher Rita Mata uses a high speed video camera to watch the eels. Most fish use suction to capture and swallow prey. In order for a fish to create suction, it must rapidly expand its mouth cavity in all different directions. And what this does is it creates negative pressure so that there's a fast flow of water in front of the fish's mouth. And so water enters the mouth cavity as well as the prey item. Even fish that bite prey use suction to swallow it, but the moray eel doesn't. They have a second set of jaws in their throat, their pharynx, that they protract up into their oral jaws. Once the oral jaws have captured their prey, the pharyngeal jaws, or the second set of jaws, grab onto the prey and move the prey back into their esophagus. Mater says there are thousands of species of fish in the ocean, many unknown to science. There may be many more surprises. It shows us that you can have these amazing changes in morphology and behavior um, with just subtle changes in the actual design of the organism. <laughs> What can DNA tell us in comparison to pharyngeal jaw research in identifying cichlids? <sighs> well, there's so many things that DNA can tell us about cichlids. Their ancestral lineage, for one. DNA can determine what geographical population and location fish derive from. All sorts of things. It's endless as far as DNA is concerned, what it can tell us about an individual fish or population of fish. But in this video, it's about 
the difference between pharyngeal jaw research in identifying cichlid species and DNA research in identifying cichlid species. So let's jump right into it. In that case, DNA can determine the sex of your fish. DNA can also determine the species, how far apart the species is from other species similar or subspecies. DNA can also, like I said before, can tell you where the species derived from as far as geographical location. All sorts of things. It's, it's vast with DNA can tell you about your cichlid. But it was good to compare the two. I say use both methods if you really want to find out or get to the nitty gritty of what species you may be housing or keeping or breeding. And with that said, just skip. I'm out.